Good morning. Okay. Mr. Akai, welcome back. Class is here, second period, and we are making a video about the anatomy of a paycheck that we're going to share with others. And we've brought up a PDF of a paycheck here in the middle of the screen. So in class, we have this on a piece of paper, and I want you to make notes kind of around the outside and the margins, and I would draw arrows to certain parts of the paycheck. I'm going to do that with text boxes, and we'll try tinker with some font sizes so you guys can see it, and let's see how this goes. So this is the program that I've, I've uh, recommended if a teacher gives you a PDF. I kind of like how it's been going. I'm going to try to make some changes, and then I can save my PDF in Google, and I can turn it in as notes, or I can bring it back up for myself later. Okay, let's talk about the big picture here. Net pay. Okay, we've talked about a couple terms here. Net pay for this check is, and I'm looking down on the bottom right, there's a couple of numbers listed there, but this one is the net pay. $723. And then there's some cents, 67 cents. Okay, so I've made a comment that's up here. Well, I'd like this text box to be a different color. Can I add a highlighter to it? Hmm. Okay, so it's going to be print. Black print. Let's see, tax bonus, color palette. Maybe I'll try like a dark blue, see if that pops. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So I've got it now in yellow. Net pay for this check is $723.67. That is what the person can spend. So I've got it just written here in the top right because this is like the big picture. And that number is down here. Oh, my gosh. That number is at the bottom. And I see one that's right next to it. Hard to read on your screen here, but if you look on your piece of paper, it says $9,158.82. And this is YTD. And YTD stands for year to date. So this is the money that a person has made all year long. Your pay stubs, your wage and earnings statement, tracks what you've made all year long. Year to date. So can I make this smaller? I'll put it underneath and make this wider. Okay. So I'll put it down here in the bottom corner because I want to see that there's another number down here with my paycheck. And this one tells me that I've made $723 on this paycheck, but over the course of the year, I've made $9,158.82. So your pay stub tracks not only this paycheck, but what has happened overall. Okay, new statement. Let's look at the basics for this document. The payer is Cormex Foods. So even though you work at Taco Bell, it might say something different as the company that pays you. This is who actually owns the restaurant. Cormex Foods owns Taco Bell number 30,261. And the payee, go ahead. Yeah, I would. The payee, the person that is paid, is named Chelsea Williams. So of course, I want to make sure that it's got my name in that box. Okay. Chelsea Williams has been paid by Cormex Foods. It's kind of like a to and from that you might see in a letter. 
Let's add something about when this is happening. Uh, can I do it first? There we go. Another comment somewhere in the white space is that the pay period is two weeks. It began on June 15th, 2017, and it went through June 2017. It was a two week pay period. And then if you notice, this is like our example from the warm up this morning, the check date, the actual day you're paid is July 4th. Nice to get in on a holiday. But this illustrates kind of the three week delay that you see when you start a job. You work a full pay period and then they cut you a check the week after. It's one of the hardest things to go through is that first three weeks where you're like, I got the job, I'm working hard, I don't have the money yet. Okay. So in vocabulary yesterday, we talked about gross pay. Let's put that down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Because gross pay is around my mouse cursor here. $846.87. Make that yellow. And gross pay is before any taxes or deductions. And this is where I want to do my math on my wage. My wage is not actually on this document. It doesn't say how much I make an hour. If my boss told me one thing, and I find another, we have a problem. Oh, excuse me, it does. In this paycheck, it does. It says that's 80 hours, and the rate is 10.27. So let's make sure that math is accurate. 80, try this with a calculator, and tell me if this is accurately done. 80 times 10.27. Does that come to $846.87? 1027, what an unusual number for a paycheck. Let's see. 80 times 10.27. It's off by like $10. Maybe. It's off, right? I just did 80 times 10.27. It says $821.6 and $821.60. So what's different? One and sixty cents. It's pretty good pay. Honestly, in the real life situation, I wouldn't even mind. Like if they gave me extra money by accident. Right. Yeah, it's on them to find that mistake. It does say that the hour regularly hourly pay is. Good eye. Overtime, that means they had time above 80 hours in this pay period. They worked more than 80. So let's look at what one hour, 1.64 hours, that's interesting. 1.64 hours times time and a half. If you work overtime in the United States, you deserve time and a half, 1.5 times your rate. If you take 1027, split it in half, and add that half again, you will make $15.41 an hour. So let's look at where this discrepancy came, 821. Well, we've got this second calculation, 1.64. Oops. 1.64 hours times 15.41. And that comes to an extra $25 for just working a little over one hour because I've the government protects people from being exploited. If you work more than 80 hours, you deserve overtime. 25 and 27 cents. 25. 27. These two things should add together. Let's, would you guys check this on your math or on your calculator for me? 
821.60 plus 25.27 should come to our gross pay because I don't see any other numbers in sick pay or vacation pay or a bonus or mileage or anything. Does it work? 25.27. 25, 27. Yeah, 846.27. 87. 87, excuse me. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. This is the part of a paycheck now and for the rest of your life. Now, I don't check every paycheck, but I want to make sure that this is accurate because I can calculate this. I know my rate. And I can make sure that this number for gross pay is accurate. The net pay is a little harder to track because there are taxes and deductions on the right side of this paycheck stub. The check you actually get just has the number on it and you take it to the bank and cash it. So her net pay is 723.67. Okay. Net pay. This is what the paycheck will say, $723.67. Hmm. What time is our next picture you take? Uh, I don't remember, but they'll be, they'll call for the announcement today for a picture we take. So the number 723.67, is it should be 846 minus this list of taxes and deductions like we talked about on the board today. Federal income tax came out. That was $15.23. Social security tax came out. That is $52.51. And Medicare tax came out, $12.28. These were things taken from the gross pay. Chelsea also has health insurance paid through her workplace. So this is not a tax, it is a deduction. She pays for her health care through her job. She gets a little advantage there because Taco Bell is paying some of this value. She, her contribution to her health insurance is $43.18 and Taco Bell picks up the rest often double that amount. So the bill for her health insurance may be $86, $87. She only pays half of it. This is why people like benefits from work. So, net pay is gross minus the gross pay minus tax and deductions. I'm going to go off the board here, but I'll see if I can finish it. Okay. Okay. Hit return. Net pay is gross pay minus tax and deductions. Here we go. The social, let's see, I'll put that down there at the bottom. Social security is a known rate, it is 6.25% of your wages. Medicare is a known rate. We all contribute 1.5%. I hope I have that right. I'm working from memory here. So I'm going to take whatever my gross pay is, multiply it. In this case, I have to change it to a decimal like we practiced earlier in the week. Multiply it by 0 0.0625 and it'll give me the amount 52.51. That is 6.25% of my wage. Medicare, I multiply 846.87 times 0 
and I should come up with $12.28. Federal income tax depends on what paperwork you filled out at the beginning of your employment. So I want to look at Chelsea's federal income tax rate. Okay. I'm going to take what she paid out of this paycheck, 15 and 23 cents. And I'm going to divide it by 846.87. 15.23 divided by 846.84 gives me this crazy looking decimal number. And I multiply times 100 to change a decimal to a percentage. Let me finish just here in a second. So she is paying 1.79 or 1.80% of her paycheck to federal taxes. 1.80. One 1.80%. And so now I can kind of check it. All right, 1% of 860, $821 would be about $8.21. So 1.8 is almost double. 2% would be $16.42. So it seems I've got the calculation right. Because what it says that I pay for federal income tax is $15, just under 16 and 21 cents. Excuse me, 23 cents. Now this would be like, you know, this is dry math to work on. It's kind of not really exciting to do, but this is your own best interest. You check your paycheck. If you guys are working this summer, the first time you get a paycheck, I want you to calculate your federal income tax. If you're paying 80%, there has been a huge mistake. You should not pay 80% of your paycheck to federal income tax. It should be somewhere between about 5 and 15%. For some reason here, Chelsea pays a very low rate. There might be reasons for that. She could have filled out paperwork that said she has five children and have lots of tax deductions. I'm almost done here. I'm just going to like look things over again. The left side of this document, maybe you want to write a note here. The left side is money coming in. The gross pay is all the money accumulated that she made. The right side is money coming out of the check before she's actually paid. These are the taxes and deductions. Her social security number is on here. This is how the government tracks us for tax payments. It gives a summary at the title. 846.87 is the gross. Net pay is $723.67. The pay period was two weeks, and I had to figure that out from the date. June 29th minus June 15th would be 14 days. And then she's paid one week later. The check number is 33348. That's how the bank would know it. I could say check 33348. Her filing status says 6-4. Now, I'm not sure what that means to Taco Bell, but it probably has something to do with her federal income tax rate. Her status determines how much federal tax comes out. This has been a presentation of the anatomy of a paycheck. Something that is not the most exciting type of math, but is one of the most personal types of math we will ever see. The first time you receive a paycheck, look it over and see if these rates are accurate. We'll be working with the numbers for Social Security and Medicare. In the room, do you guys have any questions for me on this? No. No, says Leanne. All right. <laughs> In a minute, you're going to go to your Google Classroom and you will find a list of 10 observations to make, 10 facts that come from this paycheck. 
So there's going to be 10 things to write down. They don't have to be what I did, but I could help. 10 things that you can pull off a pay stub and put into the Google form. Thanks for your attentions.